in the back and Reverend uh, Mathis was telling us it was a bad storm last night. Yeah. But how many you know we know that the storm will pass over? Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 Good morning, saints. Good morning. And we give honor to God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the confident Holy Spirit. Yes. It is good to be in God's house yeah. one more time. Amen? Amen, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And the house name attached, First Baptist Church. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Give God a hand clap of praise if you're just glad to be here this morning. Amen. No matter how you came, you're in God's house this morning. Amen. We're going to ask Minister Gladman to come with our prayer and Reverend Mathis to come with our scriptures, which will be Romans 12, 1 and 2. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let us pray. Eternal God, our fathers, again, we've come to tell you thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you, O oh God, for life, for health, and for strength. Realizing, O oh God, that it's nothing so good and great that we've done, but by your grace and your mercy, you've allowed us to see another day. A day we've never seen before and a day we shall never see again. God, we realize that last night could have indeed been our last night because you're such a great God. You're such a mighty God. You're such a worthy God. You allow us to see another day, O oh God. For that we tell you thank you right now. Oh God, we bless your name for you're worthy to be praised, Father God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same, the name of Jesus is worthy to be praised. So now, God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, you would cast aside everything that may hinder us from giving you the praise that you so justly do of, O oh God. God, have your way in this house. Walk up every hour, sit on every pew, Father God. Break the chains of those who are bound right now, Father God. Heal those that are sick, Father God. Raise those that are bent over, Father God. Have your way in this house today, Father God. In the name of Jesus. We cast out every demon of hell, Father God. In the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Have your way in this house, Father God. Bless the man of God who shall stand up and proclaim what does set the Lord, Father God. Give him preaching power. Or none of a fresh from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And he preached Christ and him crucified. But on the third day rose with all power in his hand. Oh God, we ask that you bless those who don't know you in the free part of their sin. Touch them wherever they are right now, Heavenly Father. They come run, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Oh God, we pray for those who are absent from us right now, Father God. Wherever they may be right now, touch them wherever they are, Father God. Touch the members of First Baptist Church who are not with us right now, Father God. Bless them wherever they may be, Father God. Oh Lord, we need you right now in this sin sick world, Father God. Every time we turn around, trouble on the left side and trouble on the right side. But we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh God, we know that in spite of everything that's going on, you are still on the throne and you still reign. And for that we tell you, thank you, Father God. No matter what comes our way, you have our back, oh God. No matter what stands in front of God, you have our back, oh God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, there's nothing that you cannot do. We realize, God, you can do all things but fail. We are grateful to you, God. We love you, God. We adore you, God. We magnify your name this day for your worthy, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you don't do anything else for us, God, we declare this day you've done more than enough. Then, God, we must come to the end of our journeys, oh God. We must go into a dying room and press that dying pillow, oh God. We pray, God, you would meet us in the air, Father God. Give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. May we have to praise and uplift your name better than we do here. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and ask it all. The Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm always excited to share the word of the Lord. Amen. We'll be reading in this morning in 2 Corinthians 5.17. And it reads, and I do have it. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 17 reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What such a powerful word. Thank you, Lord. And I'll also be sharing with you this one in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The flowers may, the uh, grass may wither and the flowers may fall, but the word of God stands forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Gladman and Reverend Mathis. Let's wave at our neighbors this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as our music ministry come forth. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. 
Amen. We do rise up honor and glory to God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior. Yes. To the Holy Spirit, our comfort and our God. We thank the Lord for our worship leader today. Is that you? Yes. Reverend Galen Sheets, yeah. Yes. Amen. Good to see all of our ministers of the gospel, our deacons, our deaconess, and our beautiful mothers over there. What a blessing. Amen. Thank our ushers for serving us today. Our sound man over here, our drum over here, our choir back here. Give up the love. Amen. What a blessing it is to see each and every one of you today yes. here at First Baptist Church. Uh, my sister and bro are up here today. Amen, Brenda. Come here. Always good to have you in the house. Amen. We thank the Lord for just blessing us to be here. I, I just can't believe that it's June already. <laughs> Man, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Amen. And happy birthday to all the birthday children today. Amen. I, I love birthdays, man. You know, you really can't live without them. I mean, really can't. Amen. So we thank, thank the Lord. Thank you, Miss Janice, for our beautiful flowers, our beautiful floral arrangements. Yeah, and uh, we sort of got a head start on worship this morning because Minister Valerie Johnson supposedly talked. Taught Sunday school. It was more like she preached Sunday school, and uh, she didn't know that I was listening in. But we were checking out, and uh, thank you, marvelous job. As a matter of fact, she'll be teaching all month long. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a blessing it is, and uh, what an exciting day. We got our service, and then we're going over to Elberton. Yeah, Norman Grove. CME Church, Pastor H. Yeah. Champell Brown. Yeah. Yeah. That's at 3 o'clock, and they're going to be serving between 1 and 2.30. Yeah. So we want to be there in time to eat, be ready to start the program on time, and get we little sales on back over the road. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless your hearts. And, uh, I think there's some uh, congratulations in order today. Reverend Hopkins, is it okay if we spill the beans? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, Amen. No, it ain't about her. <laughs> no, it's not about me. <laughs> so I am excited and overjoyed to announce that my mother, the Reverend Rose Johnson Maggie, is the new pastor of Bethel in Newtown. <laughs> She has faithfully traveled for the last three years, yes. like about two and a half, three hours down the road south and back. Yes. Man, yes. No faithfulness pays off. Amen. Yes. Amen. We congratulate yes. Reverend Rose Johnson. What a blessing. Amen. Everybody say it with me, sir. sir. We, would we would see Jesus. See Jesus. Come on, is there, is there. In, a word in a word from the Lord? Come on, look at your neighbor. Wake him up and tell him, there's a word. There's a word. There's a word. Let's welcome all of our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I don't care where you're joining us from. We are delighted to have you here with us at First Baptist Church where everybody is a VIP. Amen? Yeah. Come on, First Baptist. Thank you, choir. Then come on and sing. We do solicit your prayers as we come with a word from the Lord. Amen. Sang, y'all. Yes. And while they getting geared up, let me thank our brothers again. Thank y'all, brothers. You did a wonderful job last week. And yes. thank you for your commitment and your hard work. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Sing. Thank you. Certainly. <laughs> I'm going to take a trip. Come on in. Well. On that good old.
said, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He'll fix it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're only going to look at just a few scriptures. I think a couple out of one and one uh, verse out of another book. And those scriptures have uh, uh, been read in your hearing. And I want to talk about benefits of the witness protection program. Benefits of the witness protection program. Uh, as God allows us to uh, grow older and to grow up. Uh, God has uh, made a way for us uh, not only to move forward and to rise higher, but he has made a way for us to excel in life. And even as we sang happy birthday this morning, I think many of us realize that there's something that is about life itself. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. There are a couple of things, two or three things that for sure are speeding throughout the universe. And we are missing blessings that God has set aside for us. There are provisions that God has already made. But I discovered that, that the reason that many of us are missing out on what God has for us is that we are allowing some things to pass us by. We are not keeping up, if you will. We are being left behind, and any time you are left behind, you get left out. Amen. So there are some things that are speeding through the universe, life being one of them. And one of the ways that we describe that is life is short. Life is always speeding through the universe. And I found out that the life does not pull over on the side of the road and wait on us. You're either going to live or you're going to get left behind. Amen. So life is speeding throughout the universe. Not, not just life, but what goes with life is time. Time is flying, <laughs> speeding throughout the universe. And our problem is that we have not yet learned how to harness time. And that's not to say that we can find a way that we can hold time up. But we can find a way to take advantage of time. Use time to our benefit. There's no point in us waking up every day the same old person. Doing the same old thing. Got the same old stuff. In the same old place in the same old way. When God has given us life and God has given us time, but we've got to keep up because they are speeding throughout the universe. Not just life, not just time, but opportunities are speeding throughout the universe. And while we are uh, spectators, Standing on the sidelines of life, uh, opportunities are passing us by. Let me try to help you out. There's no point in you complaining and, and criticizing everybody else because you are getting left behind. God gives every last one of us some opportunity to change. And we're going to reach that turning point that we so desperately desire for life. Then we've got to not only go through the teaching and the training, but we've got to experience a transformation. Amen. And I don't know why we buck when it comes to growing up. I don't know why we, we uh, uh, hate so much that we, we can grow up in life. I love growing up. I even love growing old. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I look forward to growing even older, but I'm glad that God has, has uh, given me, and I'll get to it in a minute, but God has given us reasons to grow old and to grow up. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something, people of God, you ought to uh, think about this thing and, and stop allowing life time 
an opportunity to pass you by. Amen. The Bible teaches us that you have not. Why? Because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask for the wrong reasons. Amen. You have the wrong motives. Amen. So God has opened doors of opportunity for us. And, and you, listen, there's no point in you comparing yourself or your life with anybody else. Give God the best that you have to offer. I should give him your best. Because the truth of the matter is, those that to, to whom you're trying to compare yourself ain't worth you comparing yourself to them because they, they ain't got no way either. Amen. Amen. Listen, there's something wrong when you think other people look better than you and got it better than you got it going on because you got opportunity, and, but you got to harness, take advantage, and embrace lifetime and opportunity. So it takes transformation. And, and, and God gives us an opportunity to grow. As a matter of fact, God really demands that we grow up in him. And that's why so many of us are fighting battles that we should not be fighting today because we have not matured enough where we can fight the good fight of faith. Yeah, God will strengthen us. He will guide us. He will lead us. But we've got to submit ourselves to God and allow him to use us. Amen, somebody. I, I, I don't know about you, but, but I'm tired of, of being, I don't like being stuck. No, I don't, I don't like being stuck. I, I don't like being left on the side of the road of life. <laughs> I don't like it, and I'm not looking at what anybody else is doing. It's just what I want to do. I want to be better. I want to go further. I want to have more for my life. I want to do better for my life. I want to give more. I want to serve better. That's what I want to do. It's all right to be inspired by other people, to be encouraged by others, but you ought to have something deep down on the inside. I'm talking about some want to. No, if I can go further, I am not satisfied where I am. If I can have more, I am not satisfied with what I have. If I can do more, I am not satisfied with what I'm doing. You know, when I get satisfied, I will be satisfied when I max out. I'll be satisfied when, when I max out. But in the meantime, I am working on matriculating to my max out. Yeah, I'm trying to get there. I'm working hard to get there. I'm praying that God will use me, amen, and open up my mind and energize my spirit that I will want better out of life. Yeah. And so many, many of you have heard of the, uh, the government, the federal uh, witness protection program. And I want you to understand that every child of God is a witness. Yeah. Every child of God is a witness. And when you are a witness, listen, that, that means basically three things. That means that I have seen something or I have heard something or I have experienced something. Yeah. That's right. I thought I had another witness in here. I said that when, when you are a witness, <laughs> that means that you have seen something, heard something. That means that you have experienced something. And it means that you are now in a position to testify. I can testify because I've seen the hand of God working in my life. I said, I can testify because I heard his voice guiding me and leading me. I say I can testify because I have experienced the move of God in my life. I can testify. Amen. I can, I can testify. And when you testify, listen, that inspires others because uh, God is looking for witnesses, worshipers, uh, and workers for the kingdom of almighty God. And if you ain't seen nothing, if you ain't experienced, let me get you good English, I'm sorry. If you ain't seen anything, if you haven't felt anything, if you haven't heard anything, if you have not experienced anything, ain't no wonder why you sitting there with your mouth shut. That's no wonder can nobody make you move. The choir sings, the, the souls of Zion, the preacher preaches his heart out, the deacon pray until the glory comes down, and you still sitting there like a knot on a log. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. 
And the reason is because you have not seen it. You have not experienced it. You haven't heard it. And here's what happened with God, with the witnesses of God. Listen, is that, is that uh, there are sometimes witnesses that just come forth. Uh, let, me, let me try it another way. I said, uh, if there's a case to be had, no one needs to subpoena me. All right, all right, all right. All right. I say it because I am a willing witness. Yeah. There are times that witnesses will just come forth. And when God has done something for you, when God has worked in your life, you become a willing witness. I'm talking about you just step up when you see a need to step up. I'm talking about when you see people who are struggling, people who are dying, people who are being destroyed, and, and you cannot help yourself but step up. Well, wait a minute. Let me testify. Let, let me try it again. When I testify on a Sunday morning, I am not trying to win your approval. When I testify on Sunday morning, I'm not looking for you to slap me on my back. When I testify, when I testify, I want cases to change. When I testify, I want results to change. When I testify, I wish I had somebody. When I, listen, when I testify, my testimony opens the way for God's power to rush in and make a difference in our lives. Can I help you? I said, I, I am not testifying just for the sake of uh, hearing myself talk. Even in my preaching, I'm testifying. I am witnessing to the glory, to the power, to the love of Almighty God. I wish somebody beside me were here today who knows that Jesus is my all in all. And I'm not ashamed. I, I, I am not ashamed. I said there, there are some witnesses out there that, that has to be, they have to be summoned. They have to be uh, subpoenaed in order to show up. And, and that's why some of y'all ain't stepped up yet. You're waiting on a subpoena. And then there are some, that, listen, and then there are some who are declared as hostile witnesses. You can't say amen until I tell you, say amen somebody. That's a hostile witness. You can't testify unless somebody put you under the gun. You ain't got nothing to say unless they force you to say hostile witness. But I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad that my God has been so good to me that you ain't got to send me no subpoena. You ain't got to make me come. You ain't got to force me to do it. I'm glad to step up and let the world know that they can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's look at our scripture. Yeah. Now we're done with the introduction. Let's, 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 Romans 12 and verses 1 and 2. Hear me, people of God. And the Apostle Paul speaking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living somebody say living. living as a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God not your neighbor but acceptable unto not your co-worker not your girlfriend or your man listen that you be acceptable unto God and then he says which is your reasonable service. Listen now, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Do not be shaped or molded into the form of this world. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't understand it. But I realize I am standing between, I'm straddling two different generations. I understand that, but but I don't get I don't I don't get this uh, this new generation. I don't get this new stuff, new church folk stuff. I, I don't get it. I don't 
don't understand why there are so many churches, so many choirs, so many preachers, so many churchgoers who are doing their best to look like and to sound like and to act like the world. I don't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'm church. Yes. I'm supposed to be different. Right. I'm church. Yeah. I'm supposed to look different. Yeah. I'm church. I'm supposed to act differently, yeah. not like the world. Be not conformed to this world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then what does he say? He says, but be ye what? Transformed. Be transformed. And that means that we are to be changed from the inside out. Listen, watch this now. Because it is not just merely changed. It is changed for the better. Listen, it is changed for the better. And it's changed for eternity. Let me help you out. Listen, people of God. When we are being, we are, listen, we are never, I don't want you to think that we have arrived. Because we are never fully Transform. That's right, that's right, that's right. Amen. Until we get the glory. But in the meantime, we are being transformed. Be, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by, what does he say? By the renewing of your mind. That, that means that I am being transformed. I am I am constantly changing. I am going through a process whereby God is making me better. He is making me stronger. Whereby God is causing me to look more like him each and every day. He, he, he says that my desire is I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like him. So be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, people of God, because if, if you don't have a change of mind, you will never have a change of heart. And if you don't have a change of heart, you ain't going to change. That's right. That's right. Amen. You right about it. You ain't going to change. That's why some of us still act the same old way and do the same old stuff, doing the same old thing. I just don't get it. Listen, if I am not going to look like a Christian and act like a Christian and live like a Christian, I am not going to bother coming to church. For what? I don't aspire to become the great pretender. Can, would you tell your neighbor real quick, say, stop specializing in pretending? Go ahead and tell them. What is Some of us on Sunday morning, we are actually stepping out on a stage in life and we have already rehearsed our lives. We are already ready. And when we step out there on the stage of life, we're ready to get our act on. We're working towards an Oscar. And we good. We good. But it's, it's, it's an act. It's an act. That, 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 that's their stage name. That's their wardrobe that they're wearing. You know good well that stuff they got on ain't godly when they get out of church. You know good well some of it ain't godly even when they come to church. They're acting. They're on the stage. Amen. Somebody, they're out there pretending. And, and listen, we have sank so low in this society and we have rejected the word of almighty God that the world has us confused, confounded, and stone foolish. God, would you get me through here this morning? I, I'm trying. I need to get on through here. There's something Keep up because I'm moving quick on this and I don't want to I don't want to linger because because uh, if I get jumped I, I don't know what these brothers gonna do they may not <laughs> let me tell you something people of God you are supposed to be different you are not supposed to be like everybody else you know there's no way in the world huh? well I, don't don't ever think of yourself as well I'm just a man like everybody else every other man I'm just a woman like everyone else. no you are not. No, you are not. There's something different about you. And there's nobody here saying, well, uh, uh, yeah, all of us who are men, we just like Michael, you know, Michael Jackson. Listen, you ain't like him. You're not even like Michael Jordan. You can't do what they do. I would say, well, what you look like to me? Uh, well, he's a man. Just, no, he ain't. I mean, Jordan can fly. I can't fly. 
Amen. Michael could walk backwards. I tried it, but I... I... No. And, and the children of God, you are the example. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are the mantelpiece of the world upon which God places you for the world to see what they ought to look like. For the world to see what they should love like. What they should live like. What they should act like. God places you on the mantle of life. You are in the trophy case of life. And God wants you to shine. Let your light so shine among them. That they what may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So he says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore, if any person, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh! Oh! All things. Uh, now here in the King James Version, it sounds as though he is saying that this is past tense, but it is, it is a continuing thing where old things are continually being passed away. Come on, I, I know I got at least one witness in here today. because uh, uh, Anybody besides me, there are some things that I can point to that I have conquered, and then there are some things I can point to that I'm still fighting. Yeah. And the good thing is, I am not still fighting what I went through 20 years ago. I got that conquered already. But every level comes a new devil. I wish I had some help in here today. And every time you grow, every time God lifts you, every time God elevates you, a new devil shows up. There will always be something and somebody who will challenge your credibility as a child of God. So, and you say it this way, uh, uh, I'm, still, I'm still under construction. The Lord is still working on me. Not only are you under, under construction and the Lord is working on you, you better be working on yourself. Then he says, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means that you have something to do with it, that you have a part to play in it. That means that you have a role to play and so when we look at this uh, witness protection program, uh, which means that uh, uh, it relieves me of any fear of testifying because I am protected. But there are some things that, that goes along with that, with the witness protection program. There are some benefits that we get out of being in the witness protection program. And every child of God is in God's witness protection program. That's why you are not fear following God. I said, that's why you are not fear following the word of God. You are not fear being a child of God. Witness. Yes. Testify. Yes. Now, here's what it does. You know, and I want us to look at some of the benefits, but I want you also to understand this, that our benefits, listen to me, our benefits are limited to the level of our obedience. Yes, When you cease being obedient, you cease receiving the benefits. Nobody should have been sad there except the ones who are disobedient. Everybody else should have been shouting. Hallelujah, I've been obedient. I'm looking for my benefits. Amen. And, and your benefits are limited to your level of obedience. Maybe the reason some doors have not opened to you because you haven't obeyed your way up to that door. When you follow the word of God, when you follow the will of God, when you're in the will of God, listen to me, people of God, God will open the door, listen, and he will add to your benefits. And he will open the way for you to come in and receive. How many of y'all want your benefits? I want me mine. I want me mine. Amen, somebody. I'm glad that God has given me some benefits. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I see right now, I, I got to work a little bit hard. I thought, I thought I was going to be through in 30 minutes, but I need 45 more minutes. 
<laughs> Y'all sure? Listen. When you are obedient in paying your car note, you can ride. When you cease being obedient, you lose the benefit of riding. When you pay your light bill, you have the benefit of light. If you cease paying your light bill, you lose the benefit of light. Don't act like I ain't talking to you. Go ahead and slide over so I can sit right down next to you. When you pay your house note, when you pay your rent, you have the benefit of the comfort of sitting in your home worry-free. And you don't have to spend 23 hours out of your 24 hours looking out the window. You can, you can, I ain't talking about y'all, I'm your cousin in the neighborhood right now. You can leave home and you can stay gone as long as you want to and you don't have to come back home fearing your stuff out on the sidewalk. When you are obedient. Yes. And when you walk in the word of God, when you say to God, order my steps in your word. Dear Lord, order my steps. And when you walk the way God tells you to walk, when you live the way God tells you to live, when you love the way God tells you to love, then God has some benefits for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the Witness Protection Program, this is something that they tell you from day one, from the start. They give you a set of instructions and directions, and they tell you right up front, you cannot deviate from this. If this plan that we have laid out for you, you cannot deviate from this plan. You've got to do exactly what we tell you to do and do it exactly the way we tell you to do it. Otherwise, your program is canceled. And when your program is canceled, then you are out there on your own with no protection whatsoever at all. Are you hearing me, people of God? They let you know up front. And listen, God tells us for those who, are, who walk in his word, those who obey his word, he tells us what the benefits are. That, that's why he said, I have set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life. Because he has given us those blessings. He's given us those benefits. Amen. And they let you know up front, so you got to follow the program. You got to do what we tell you to do. And uh, you got to go where we tell you to go. And, and, and to some extent, you got to live the way we tell you to live. Otherwise, you're going to lose your benefits. They said, said you're going you're gonna to lose your benefits. Uh, amen. So God, listen, uh, the benefits uh, that we have coming to us, they are benefits to which we are entitled because for no other reason other than we are witnesses. Witnesses. Uh, now, some other people might get some things in life, but, but they can't get blessed like I can get blessed as a child of God. They cannot get blessed like you can get blessed as a child of God. Because, listen, what does God do when he places us in the witness uh, protection program? Well, the first thing that he does, and I love the way this song puts it, God gives us a new identity. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That that's, why, that that's why no matter how much you try to make me bubble, I ain't bubble no more. And I'm good with my mama and them calling me Bubba, but I ain't there no more. I just told you last week, some of us are still trying to live the life that is not available to us anymore. That's over and done. Live the life that you have right now. So he has given us a new I. Identity. The angels in heaven have changed my name. <laughs> yeah, God has changed us. He has changed us as people of God. He has given us a new identity. This is why, this is why, you know, in the witness protection program, the idea is give people a new identity so what? So that other people that they have known what? May not, may not what? May not recognize them. I give you a minute. That one takes a little while to sit here. That's good. Wow. That's good. That's good. We see them. 
When God changes your life, people don't recognize you anymore. Listen to me. And stop trying to make them recognize you. I don't, I don't know who you are anymore. That's the idea. You don't act like you used to. That's the idea. You don't hang around us like, that's the idea. I have a new identity and those out there in the world, I don't expect you to recognize me because that's the way God designed it so that you can't recognize me. I am changed. I am not the person that you knew. And so many people are being destroyed in relationships for one reason or another because they have not awakened yet to realize that good or bad, up or down, better or worse, I don't know who that person is. But when God changes us, he gives us a new identity. He changes our name. Amen. And we have to live under that name of Jesus. Amen. It's at the name of Jesus that every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord above all. We have a new name and glory. Thank you, Lord. It's mine. Mine. And I don't expect the world to recognize me. I don't expect you to associate with me anymore. Unless you go through the witness Hallelujah. protection program. All right, All right, yeah, he, listen, he not only changes our name, changes our identity, but he changes our location. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He changes our location. Uh, uh, that, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I don't go where I used to go because God has put me at another place. And, and listen, let, let me go ahead and warn you now. When you move out of that deadly, destructive, and dangerous neighborhood, that evil and wicked neighborhood, there are some neighbors there that are going to always try to get you to come back. But go ahead and tell them, I ain't coming back. I am in a new location. Now, if you look at the Witness Protection Program, you know, to a large degree designed for gangsters and people, former gangsters and all those who now will testify on behalf of the government. They ain't trying to go back where they come from because they realize if I, hear me, if I go back there, it could be sudden death. Stop playing around with the devil. When God has placed you in the witness protection program, he has given you a new identity. He has given you a new name. He has placed you in a new location. Stop trying to go back. Because I'm going to tell you something, people, about hear me? If you keep going back, every time you go back, the likelihood of sudden death rises. You are getting closer and closer to death. Hear me? I know some of us think that God is going to always give us an opportunity to repent. That was what you had last week. God ain't going to keep putting up with your mess. When you, he keep bringing you out, you keep going back, you think he's going to keep on bringing you out? God going to tell you what the devil, get on out there and get the devil then. You keep going back, sudden death. He has put us in a new location. Are oh, you hearing me, people of God? Listen, as a witness, as a witness, I gladly testify on behalf of the Lord. As a witness, I understand that I have some benefits. As a witness, I am, I am covered and I am protected. That's why I can walk boldly in life. That's why, uh, listen, I can speak boldly because I am covered. I am protected. God has my back, my front, my left side, my right side, my bottom, my top. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I am covered. Yes. Amen. I am not fearful of the devil or what he might throw my way because I am covered. I can walk in faith. God strengthens my faith. 
Um, and and we're, we're frightened of too many things. And, 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 you know, I said to our brothers and I say to us occasionally, listen, we are people of God. We ain't got no being to be here. You know, the devil, the de devil been on my back. Well, get him off your back. Yeah. 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 Amen. Your little grandchild ought to teach you how to get folk off your back. Jump on my back, man. I'm 74 years old, man. We can't do that no more. No. <laughs> I had to hurry up and get them off my back. Wanna come jump in my lap? Oh no, buddy, we don't go down no more. You are equipped to keep the devil off your back. You are strong enough, you have the strength to keep the devil off your back. I say, listen, God has equipped you, He has empowered you. Stop being a spiritual wimp. And become a spiritual warrior. Yeah. I am strong in the Lord. Yeah. I'm not afraid of what the world throws my way. What the devil throws my way. Because I am a witness. Yeah. Let me close it. Listen to me. As a witness, I understand something. That my life, my life, listen, is governed by the agency. The heavenly agency. They tell me where to go. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They, they tell me where to go. They tell me what to do. I am governed by the one who has authority over me. Your neighbor has no authority over you. When God gave us dominion over the entire earth, that was the entire earth minus our brothers and our sisters. God ain't gave you dominion over nobody. Somebody ought to go ahead and say amen if you can. No, no, people of God. Listen, um, we, we, we are governed by God. That doesn't mean that we ignore ad good advice and godly counsel. But it means that, listen, I am governed by God. And, and really, the truth of the matter is, the, the more that I am governed by God, the less I need you. Because here's how it works, just in case you don't know. If I listen to God, I don't have to listen to you because it would become unnecessary for you to tell me anything. If I don't listen to God, I need somebody to help me out. I need somebody to speak up. I need somebody to give me some godly counsel. Hello? I said, listen, when the more God speaks, the less you and I have to speak. Because we're listening to God, our supreme counselor, our supreme guide. Amen. And so we are guided, we are led, we are governed by this heavenly agency, if you will. The kingdom of Almighty God. We are, we are led by what God has outlined for us. And if we obey him, then we can live with the benefits. We can enjoy the benefits. Listen, let me, let me tell you this. Two things here, and then we're out of here. If you are going to Submit, subject yourself to transformation. I want you to do this. I want you to first recognize that you have every motive, uh, every uh, motivation, I should say, every motivation in the world to enjoy the benefits of God. All you got to do is look at God's creation. You ought, to, you ought to be motivated by that. You have every motivation in the world. God has proven himself. He has proven himself loving. He has proven himself kind. He has proven himself forgiving. So we are, we are motivated by that. Uh, we, have, we have every uh, motivation in the world. We, that, that ought to ignite us. That ought to excite us. That ought to energize us, knowing what, what kind of God we have. But listen, you got to have the right motive. Because there are too many of us trying to get over on God. You want the benefits, but you don't want to live the life. You want the benefits, but you don't want to make the sacrifices. You want the benefits, but you don't want the responsibility. You want the benefits, but listen, you don't want the commitment. That's why we got to learn from God how, I'm on my way out the door, how to cut some people off. 
There are some activities that we need to cut out, and there are some people that we need to cut off. Because if you don't share the same motive that I have, if you're not trying to glorify God, we can't walk together. If you're not trying to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth, we cannot walk together. And I'm not going to allow you to become a dead weight on me. Because I want my benefits. I am not turning my back on God because you turned your back on him. God was kind enough to offer me a place in the witness protection program. And since I signed up, I want to stay with it. I don't know what y'all think about it, but I love the benefits. I said, I love the benefits. I love the benefits of knowing that God has changed my life, of knowing that God has given me new life. I love the benefits of knowing that God has me covered. I love my benefits. Hallelujah be to God. I love not being who I used to be. I love not doing what I used to do. I love not going where I used to go. I love not being bothered with folk that I used to be bothered with. Yeah, that's what I said, that I knew All right, And so God has given you the benefits. And out of all of that, he gives us the benefit of the doubt. And what God has provided for us, we in no way deserve it. His love, his favor. His mercy, His yes. grace. Right, right. He's saying, you, my friend, need to be protected from the elements. You need to be protected from the enemy. You need to be protected from this environment. And God says, enter, enter into the witness protection program. And the way that you sign up is to say yes to Jesus. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor and have a lady. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest. Unto your souls. Rest. Peace. No fear. No anxiety. No worries. You shall find. In this witness protection program. That's what he says. He has made a way for you as we stand. Jesus says to us, come unto me, come to him. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. If there's one here today, let me make something clear to you. We love those who attend with us those who follow us, those who support us. But I want you to know that everyone needs to belong through membership to a, to a church. There are benefits that come with membership. There are certain access that come with membership. Whatever you do, we you, you, you're welcome to serve in this church any way you want to, but I, I want you to know that there's nothing like being a full-fledged member where you yes. have committed. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, yes. uh, because I don't, I don't want us to spend the rest of our lives dating. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you date, that means you can walk whenever you get ready. Right. And there's some folk out there to let you know uh, uh, you you trying to get benefits that you're not entitled to. We, we ain't married. Some things require commitment. Some things you don't get without commitment. 
And again, we're glad to have anyone. I don't, I don't make a, a big deal about people joining our church. We just, if you can get here and hear the word of God, I'm good because God will lead you from there. Yes, you know? amen. Yeah. amen. I'm not knocking myself out trying to, you know, you know do whatever. You know, I, I, I prefer to let God do it. Amen. <laughs> amen. Or whatever he does. But I want you to be protected. I want you to be yes. a full a full member of the Witness Protection Program Amen. so you can enjoy the benefits. Father, we bless you and we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, God, continue to work in us and through us. And Lord, we pray if there's one in our midst who are out of the ark of safety, maybe they need to come and say yes to Jesus. Maybe they need to come and unite with this church, Lord God. But we leave that to you. And whatever you do, God, we're happy with it. We're satisfied with yes. it. And we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for speaking to us today. And God, I pray that you will allow your word to continue to resonate in our hearts. That we might be better on tomorrow than we are on today. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Those of the church, I hope you can come.